Okay, this is Nick Dutch reading um, an excerpt of the next book, next essay, or whatever you want to call it, which is coming out uh, later on in 2009. Paranormal, paranormal researchers are always looking out for evidence of the paranormal, but what are they actually doing? Some might say that they are using a scientific method, but what is science? Put simply, science is the search for the truth. You will notice that this definition uses the word search rather than finding the truth. You will also notice that there is no statement of facts in that definition, but an allusion that there is some kind of facts of the knowable uh, and the yet unknown universe. But what is the search for the truth about? Often it is experimental design, the setting up of the experimental conditions, and then the observation of the results that one can then call the evidence and that then becomes proof. But what do we mean by results, evidence and proof? The word results refers to what is observed by whichever method. It can be anywhere on the, on the spectrum between being completely coincidental to being the direct results of the phenomenon under investigation, the results of the experimental conditions. However, there is always a possibility that the results could be caused by extraneous factors that are outside of the clean room of the experiment. So after every experiment or experience with the apparently supernatural, a detailed analysis has to be done of all other factors outside of the original experimental design to ascertain whether there can be any other interference from any other knowable or unknown source, and then to eradicate the other forces from the model of the work that we are developing. So results can exist in all circumstances, and it is up to the experimenter to, at times, have the humility to say that he or she does not know what has created specific phenomenon. Thus, results themselves are, by, are no way statements of fact of the workings of the universe, just what has happened under certain circumstances. You must educate yourself in reasoning to be able to ascertain what facts uh, can have created each result. In natural science, statistical analysis is used to work out what the probability of a certain result may be due to chance as a result of repeated experimentation. It is worthwhile as an occultist understanding this method. Most occultists, on the other hand, use only uh, one-off results as their knowledge foundation of what is real. The mo thus, most occultists, despite the allegations that they are performing a science, are nowhere near the scientific method. The word evidence has some similar meaning to the word results. Nearly anything can be considered to be evidence. That is, in its own right, a problem. When an occultist gains as much as one experience, when a ghost hunter gets as much as one anomalous recording or a light phenomenon on a camcorder, or when a pagan magician gets as much as a slight change of mood or a Christian seems to get a happening as a result of prayer, they see this as evidence. The word is dragged out, kicking and screaming from our dictionaries every time that a singular apparently connected happening occurs, usually with a very limited connection with the actual alleged cause. The reason for this is due to the evil phenomena of belief. Our highly advanced societies have moved backwards in their understanding to the point whereby not only the undereducated feel that it is appropriate to lay down the apparent laws of the universe, but that belief is exalted above to the extent whereby superstition of a more primitive and even pre-pagan nature emerges. Let me get this clear. Evidence is not proof, and even proof is not a statement of facts of the universe, either seen or unseen. When we gather some evidence together, it may create an apparently cohesive model of the world, but it won't be any use if we're trying to find out what is real or not. Remember that science is the search for the truth. Can any human being know the truth, any truth. Emphatically, no. All we can do is to explore the world, both natural and unseen, and then take it from there. We can state that uh, an emergence, sorry, an experience gives us some results or, or evidence. But to take that model of the way the world seems to work, uh, to, the state, to, to be a statement of facts, would be deceptive to the extreme. If you do this, you are taking belief and turning that into a worldview and that is narrow-minded in its scope, as to be totally useless. You might as well design a religion based upon eating toenails is somehow good for your karma. Worldviews are not facts, and beliefs are lies. We cannot hope to even come close to finding out what is real or not, but we can carry on experimenting, experiencing, and learning, knowing that each failure is the most valuable thing that we can have as they teach us that the models of the world, the beliefs that we had, were incorrect, 
and that it was insanity to have had those beliefs. The final word that I wish to discuss here is that of proof, and that's a very difficult one. If one comes across the word proof, we are assuming that what we are looking at or hearing is in fact a statement that something is 100% fact, when in reality there are no facts in our universe, just things which seem to be true. Note the use of the word theme under very specific circumstances. The word proof is normally used in academic argumentation whereby an argument being an examination of certain ideas in a theoretical world of other ideas with theoretical roots, rules surrounding them is investigated. The argument can be proven on paper but but, that is, but, but if that's just in the text that you're reading or the video that you're watching but the actual facts of the universe remain unknown, completely unknown. Thus, all proof is not any uh, statement of objective truth at all. The results of a dowsing experiment can prove the theory surrounding dowsing, but they are not sufficient for anyone to make the statement that dowsing is, is in fact a fact at all, uh, not in the same manner as, for instance, gravity is a fact. However, they should not, that should not stop you from experimenting or experiencing so long as you have the critical ability to think. Essentially, nothing is true, and that is why you need a great understanding of the scientific method so that, the, the, that you learn what is worthwhile considering to be true. Useful alleged facts accepted temporarily until you have grown in your knowledge and experience to be able to discard them. And then with the passage of time to expand the understanding of what is uh, usefully true. The type of people who will try and stop you in your investigation are mainly religious people who wish to instill in you fear and superstition, terror that the demon might assail you, and essentially these people don't understand that there is no point in accepting that something is true if it isn't useful. They are trying to manipulate your mind and remove from you the scientific method. The other type of people you have to be careful of, and I know I've mentioned them before, but I must mention them again, are those who have the belief that, in inverted commas, magic works but are too unintelligent and inarticulate to state how and why they came up with the, these ideas and can't give any examples of results, evidence or proof. They are believers and have stopped understanding what they are doing. So, when you're designing your experiments, you have to take a deep and searching look at what it is you, you will qualify as results and as what you would qualify as evidence and to what you would qualify as proof and all else should be taken out of the equation altogether. You have to design the experiment in such a way as to remove as far as possible all extraneous factors, being anything that might provide a result that might affect your interpretation of what you have experienced. And after the uh, experience, you need to be able to analyze all that has happened in an emotionally removed state of being that is without belief. We have to look with even greater care and responsibility at the words that we use when we are describing what has transpired both to our others and to ourselves. If you start telling yourself that you have made a discovery, then you will start uh, to condition your mind to accept that you have been touched with the truth, and that is in its own right would be a lie. So you must also make sure that you don't abuse language to the point whereby you can misrepresent what has transpired to anybody else. For if, for instance, you were to tell someone that you have made a great occult discovery, but their level of education was substantially higher than yours, or they understood the meanings of the words that you were using better than yourself, you would essentially be presenting yourself to them as a complete loser. If, on the other hand, you told another person of either a weaker nature, lower level of education, or a person in dire need of assistance, that you have made a great occult discovery, you would also be presenting yourself as something despicable. You would be being misleading and immoral. You therefore need much more responsibility as an occultist over the words that you use than a natural scientist or doctor.